The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today, Enhanced Security While Saving Cost of Vehicle Identification and Parking. My name is Mike Rabina. I'm the Executive Vice President of PIG Electronics, and I have a brief agenda for us today. As always, I have to begin with a little bit of an introduction to PIG Electronic. I'll go into methods and comparison of vehicle identification technologies. Then move on to factors that affect the performance of an automatic vehicle identification system and provide some example implementations before providing my conclusions. I'd like you to relax. This webinar is being recorded, so you don't have to take notes. And you can ask questions of me uh, through the GoToWebinar control panel. There you'll find an area where you can ask questions, uh, post them up, and I will answer as many as possible in the time that we have available. I believe this is a short agenda. We can probably get into it through about maybe a half hour or so. I'd like to remind everyone, we, we do these uh, webinars just prior to major events that we're attending. And next week, uh, the International Parking Show is coming to Orlando, Florida. It's being held June 3rd through the 6th. It's a must-attend event for anybody that's in parking or mo mobility. Uh, I believe you'll find 250 exhibitors plus at that event offering solutions and more than 3,500 attendees. If you do happen to be going to that show, I'd ask you to stop by our partner's booth, QSAC in booth number 732, and Fast RFID in booth number 1734, where you'll be able to see these products that will be discussed here in this afternoon's webinar. Let's go through for it. First, a little bit about FIG Electronic. FIG is a German manufacturer and a technology supplier celebrating its 50th anniversary just last year. We have 350 employees and more than $50 million in sales. All development, all production is made in Weilberg, Germany. Uh, we do not do any outsourcing of the product. We completely control the design, manufacturing, and distribution out of that uh, just location just north of Frankfurt, Germany. We're one of the only manufacturers of RFID equipment to have a pure channel of distribution. We don't do any end user transactions uh, and we rely on our uh, channel partners to have our hardware incorporated as part of their solution. And in this case, access control and vehicle identification. FIG has four operating divisions. Identification is just one. Identification is offering passive RFID readers and antennas for the three primary frequencies used in passive RFID, low frequency, high frequency, and also UHF. We also derive revenue from Sensors Group, which is offering loop detectors for traffic control systems. Our controller division offers intelligent control for gate and barrier control. And our newest division is Payment, which is offering contactless payment readers and terminals that are EMV co-certified. This is, this is for your NFC type phones, your contactless bank cards. And I'd like you to consider each of those four divisions, how they play in a parking application, certainly with vehicles uh, identification, the loop detectors at the gate and barriers for safety control, the controllers that operate the actuator, and also the payment uh, of uh, your fare collection or your parking fees. So we're very much involved in parking, very important industry for FIG. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this vehicle identification methods. There's two types, if I look at it. One is optical. It's an optical uh, or an automatic number plate recognition system based on optical character recognition or OCR. Here you'll see a plate, a license plate on the front of a vehicle, which is very common over in Europe, not so much here in the United States where the characters are essentially read by taking a photograph of the item in comparison to a wireless technology such as radio frequency identification. Here, commonly, a windshield tag is placed on the driver's side or uh, passenger side and is read by a, uh, an antenna system that has reading distances as much as 20 to 30 feet. 
And that uh, identification is then used uh, in both cases to communicate to an access control panel, which then operates the gate itself, letting uh, items pass through or the vehicles to pass through. Let's compare the attributes of these two technologies, license plate recognition and RFID. Uh, you'll see quite a few of attributes, provisioning the tag itself or the piece of identification, the detection rate, the accuracy of the data that's captured, the reliability of the hardware, the environmental immunity factors into this as well, how to handle multiple lanes, mounting the equipment, and also security. Security is one of the most important areas within uh, identification, especially if it's being used for uh, financial transactions. And certainly parking is one of those that has financial transactions associated with it. Let me take a time to go through each of these. First, let's take a look at uh, provisioning. Provisioning or user provisioning is a process of creating, maintaining, or deactivating access rights and privacy while ensuring the enterprise resource security. And here you see the, the automatic number plate recognition in the form of a license plate, in this case, my home state of Florida, uh, versus RFID, which uh, places the windshield tag onto the vehicle itself. Those systems then work with a back end system that associate the identifier, the license plate or the RFID tag, to a user account. And that data can either be locally stored, served up in a server, served up into the cloud. And when you get right down to it as regards to provisioning, that back end system is identical, whether it's a license plate that's used for the identifier or whether it's an RFID tag. But in the case of a license plate recognition, I'd have to put a check mark beside uh, the ANPR uh, because it's simply using a form or a credential that's already been paid for and issued to the user. Everybody has a license plate on their vehicle, so why not use that in the case of identifying who they are as they're entering a parking facility versus RFID? And there are some uh, issued transponders, for instance, via government, and these are in the form of your toll road type transponders. And there are some parking facilities that are using those transponders for the collection and access into the facility for control. I know here in the state of Florida, we have our SunPass. And when I go to the airport, it reads my SunPass uh, to transponder to provide access and to charge me for my parking. Uh, but uh, others, you know, for instance, in private facilities, private parking facilities, not so much. You know, those RFID tags would have to be provisioned in some way to provide to, say, monthly pass holders. The detection rate. I want to get to a common understanding or definition of these terms because I think that there's a chance of uh, misinterpreting what the real performance rates are. So first I'm going to start with a detection rate. It's the total number of vehicles detected, let's say by an external system, a loop detector, for instance, compared to the total number of tags or plates that are read correctly. I think that's a fair way of determining you know, what the true detection rate of a system is. Um, I don't find a lot on detection rates uh, for RFID you know, when I do a Google search. But I did find this, and it was just posted you know, within the last month uh, from MassLive.com. It's talking about the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, where they're saying their EasyPass system is getting better than 99% accuracy after six months and a quarter billion transactions uh, in there. They're all electronic tolling facilities, 99%. Um, but when you take a look at that a little bit closer, 86% of those transactions are via an easy pass transponder. And only 1.9 million easy pass accounts exist in comparison to 2.4 million pay by plate accounts. Uh, the pay by plate it's obviously are being read by a license plate reader. In that article at Mass Live, you know, I, I determined or I found out that the state of Massachusetts offered a grace period that ended last week to switch from pay by plate 
to EasyPass.